There we go. Hello, folks. Welcome back. I'm the one, the only. I am a hobo, Tom. And oh, wow, this is going to be kind of a very instinct, very concise show. Mainly because no one said anything to me. Wow. I feel kind of bad, but that's okay. That just means the show gets done quicker. I get time to sleep. Get time to do my emails. I'm okay, though. That's okay. I know there's always that weird night, so I have no problem with that because tomorrow's going to suck. Enough said about that. You know, it's my day off from doing YouTube videos. I have to work three jobs tomorrow. And hobo. And go to the gym. And figure out when and or what or if I'm going to eat. So, enough about that, though. Let's get right to some AEW. Uh, AEW starts, starts off hot. Uh, first match we have, we have Kenny Omega taking on Hank and, and Hangman Adam Page. Taking on Dustin Rhodes and QT Marshall. Uh, this was weird. Mainly because Kenny Omega and Adam Page came out. Dustin Reynolds, QT Marshall, and Brandy came out. But no Alley. Indeed. Uh, starts off classic start on um, the tie up into the headlock. Dustin, can you kind of do that? Dustin was cursing a lot, man. This is a new Japan pro wrestling, Dustin. You can't curse like this on TNT. I want to see the news reports tomorrow and see how many times they drop. Uh, why you? I want to know how often they did that. You. Whoa. That was... That was intense, man. Every person just, just shudders like, whoa. That was intense. Whoa! I can't... I have to be. I, I'm glad I'm self-editing to myself. So that was pretty. <laughs> that was pretty intense. But yeah, Dustin was doing a lot of that. I don't think Dustin was really happy with the way this match went. Again, Dustin's a very classically trained wrestler. Kenny Omega, not so much. Hangman and Page, he knows what he's doing. QT Marshall, uh, he's a little rough around the edges, and so is this match. This so is pretty. It was an okay match. We'll, we'll get into this though, a little bit more detail. So again, classic startup. It's a tie up into a headlock, some rope running. Dustin hit. Eventually, did hit a her karana. A tags in QT Marshall. Hangman Adam Page gets tagged in, and QT Marshall. Oh yeah, he's he's the whooping boy in this match, because he starts to eat some of those vicious, loud chops, and when he went to cover up and duck. Hangman and Page just slapped him around the back. It doesn't hurt, but it's just annoying. It stings and it leaves this big palm print on you. I think that was a joke in the weight room at high school where like, you would just annoy your partner and see how focused they were weightlifting, but just slapping him right in the chest as he's bench pressing like a couple hundred pounds. And you have to be focused there. And then there was the... Uh, and there were some weird spots. Um, again, Hangman and Page brought QT Marshall to their corner. The typical wrist lock or arm ring or wrist lock. And Kenny Omega was going to jump off and did like a very awkward double X handle to like the ribs. It's like QT Marshall like, didn't know what he was doing. And again, all the cursing on TNT. Oh my god. Oh. I picked up Dustin's bad habit, I guess. It was pretty bad. Um, then there was a huge back body drop that only Dustin can do. He's so good at that. Uh, Page of, on, on to Kenny Omega. Omega went so high up in the air. He went to the top of the Daily Center. And eventually, Page gets a hot tag. Oh. And just lets go. He just beats up. Dustin, he beats up QT Marshall, flung all over the place. Omega gets back in. He does a roll, roll through 
the second rope moonsault. I forget what he calls it. You know, he kind of picks him up on his shoulders, rolls through, moonsaults him. Uh, Dustin keeps on cursing. I don't know if he's just cursing in general or if he's just intentionally doing it or saying, hey, wow, that was also pretty bad. Man, I was bad today. I'm talking like a... Oh, wow. I don't want anyone to hear that. I'm glad again I was edited. Yeah, um, he keeps on cursing. And then maybe it's because his outfit started to fall apart. It looks like he tried to, like, Elmer glue the Nightmare family patch on the back of his outfit. It was just falling off. That's not a good thing. You have to have someone professionally stitch that, just like the WWE does. Dustin knows that because he was in the WWE. Uh, QT Marshall did the QT special and a flying elbow. And that flying elbow looked weird. It just didn't look right. Uh, Dustin hit a great looking Canadian destroyer, though. QT Marshall then called for. Bang! The diamond cutter! He actually hit the diamond cutter with a bang. But on Kenny Omega, Adam Page got back in the ring, though, broke that up. Then Hangman again started to go off on QT Marshall. And then Allie showed up. And to her credit, I don't know what they're going to do with her. But she just showed up, like, from a decent distance away. Again, social distancing. And just would cheer. It's like, yay, come on, QT, yay, yay. I mean, Brandy was closer, and Brandy was like, like, why are you here? You're distracting him. Like, no, she's like way over there. Ah, Brandy's just jealous. Because, I mean, who knows? Maybe Allie has a better TV. Maybe Brandy was sober. Again, watch a shot of Brandy. Like the first three minutes in the first, in the last three minutes, she does nothing but drink. Lush. Hot lush. Yeah. And remember, folks, women don't get drunk. They just get a wee bit tipsy. And then Kenny Omega hit the V trigger on the back of his head, but that didn't work. Um, Hangman and Page kind of jumped, took out. Dustin Rose, they did the last call. Kenny Omega and Hangman and Page win. It was a Cheeseburger match. Allie came over to con console her man. Brandy was giving her the business. It's like, why? I don't know. Then they had then they had a series of quick matches. Let's see how good this those pages of the notes. Wow, so many notes today. Um, Adam J taking on Abaddon. Abandon or Abaddon. I don't know. I, I forget how you pronounce that. Ooh, pull that up. That's the wrong thing. Anna J just, just got jobbed out in a squash match. Abandons like a crease. Abandons like a. Ab Adon. Abaddon. I'll say abandon. They're missing like a consonant there. She's like a creepy rose. She's like a creepy, chunky rosemary. But. Yeah, Anna J got zero offense in. Abandon, yeah. Just beat her up a lot. Um, most interesting part of the match is was the end when Abandon... I even forget what she did to her. It wasn't anything spectacular. It was just like a basic wrestling move, and Anna J ate the pin. She lies there in the mat. And then, so this is... Uh, yeah, it was a can of soup. The Dark Order came down. And we find out that one they helped Anna J. Anna J to the Dark Order? 
Indeed. And then they and then Brody Lee gave a paper something to Colt Cabana. Was this a contract of on, on CM Punk? Was it CM Punk nudes? Was it Colt Cabana with CM Punk nudes? No, it was none of that stuff. It was a wrestling contract saying that Brody Lee and Colt Cabana were gonna face Oh, why do why I think it's the best friends, I think? They're facing someone next week, though. But they're doing it together. So again, Dark Cabana. Cult order. The cult, cult, cult world order. For life. Wow, after sitting in that chair. This is normally my favorite chair, but this... I think my ass is just getting sore. Why is sore again? This is what happened in AEW tonight. It was just yeah, it was just bad words all across. Um, next match was MJF taking on Billy. This was actually pretty fun. MJF <laughs> trying to arm ringer. You realize that Billy Gunn's like twice the thickness muscular wise of MJF. Uh, but, but he counters that. <laughs> um, and then MJF tried to counter that. He put him the classic heel headlock and then just punched him. Ric Flair style. MJF has learned a lot. He's been watching some Ric Flair matches. Uh, Billy Gunn. Again, he has his own bag of heel tactics. He's like, ha, ha, ha. Anything you can do, I've done before, kiddo. Uh, MJF again eventually tries to throw Billy Gunn to the outside. But yeah, or he tries to leave. Billy Gunn brings him back on his shoulder. Uh, MJF tries the rope snap. Nope, didn't work. Billy Gunn, he knows that trick. And, of course, then MJF goes, The Ric Flair strut, and then he backed up. He's like, "Uh oh!" So yeah, that was that was pretty good. Uh, NJF has has great comedic chops when he has to. It's a great heel, I'm a co a cowardly heel that everyone wants to, to watch get destroyed. Uh, MJF again. He and and then he would decide to wrestle. Uh, he went for the two chop blocks, the knee of Billy Gunn. Smart stuff. He's an older guy. Trust me, those knees goes out a lot easier than you think. Uh, the ankle stomp again. Very woo. Rick flourish. Uh, MJF went for the calf crusher. The rope assisted, but Aubrey, Aubrey did not just admonish MJF. She kicked. She kicked his hands off the ropes. And Aubrey says, and Re MJF says, "You're not supposed to do that. You're just here for the pin or the submission." And then during this match, uh, Britt Baker got involved. She would pass notes to, to Tony Schiavone. And even Tony Schiavone's like, what the? Even Tony's cursing. Wow. It's like New Japanitis or something. But yeah, um, there's, of course, conspiracy theory with Aubrey, whatever. Britt Baker is becoming mildly amusing now. And she's more annoying. We'll get to her, though. Um, so what else happened in this match? Yep, so Aubrey did that. A ward low in front of Billy Gunn. Billy Gunn decked him. They went to the outside. Uh, MJF tried the famouser. Nah. Billy Gunn just straightened his back. Flip, flip MJF over. There was no famouser for anyone. Ward low gets involved a little bit. They go to the outside. Wardlow beats up one of his sons. I think it's Austin Gunn. Uh, Billy Gunn then tosses him out. Uh, but before and without the referee you see, there was the infamous well, ring that, of course, he so sneakily put on his finger <laughs> and did the, the boar smile. From from Rocky and Bull, he's like, <laughs> uh, so he, he just baited his time until 
Um, Ward until Ref Aubrey was distracted, couldn't see. Billy Gunn walked right into, whoa, boom, that sucker punch with the ring, dropped Billy Gunn. And Vieta just kind of flopped on him like it was some like weird accident thing that happened. Hooked the leg, like as if he needed to do that. And MJF got the pin. I'll tell you what, this match was entertaining. Cheeseburger match. And back on the outside, Wardlow gets in it with Jungle Boy. Uh, Lucia Source is there. Marco Stunts there. Uh, MJF then gets involved. And this is whole schmoz between MJF and Wardlow and Jurassic Express. So we'll see what happens next. Well, that, right after that, um, Britt Baker, yep, she's on her little thing. And she's talking to Tony. He's like, Tony, I'm going to put you in a friend timeout. Reva, drive me out of here. Except for it's not Reva. Driving that, it was pig swole. It would have been more entertaining if she would have. And I, I know how, I know exactly how far away it is from the Jacksonville River. She could have taken that golf cart. Or that like like a, a a turf cart drove to the Jacksonville River and just dumped Britt Baker into the Saint not Jacksonville River but the Saint Johns River. That would have been funny. We'll find out what happens Britt Baker later because then we have a Cody Rhodes and Rookie Sparks. This is the big person. Ugh. Ricky Sparks is coming from the NWA. Um, and so much cursing. Because even Ricky Sparks was Cody, you. Oh, oh, that was racist, too. That was really bad. Especially in this time of, of all discomfort when Elmer Gunn's taking his, when you're taking away the guns of Elmer Fudd. Yosemite Sam and I think what was that? I think in I think it was in Florida. Some some guy punched a preacher in the face. And the cops took him down. He said, Man, you can't breathe, man. You're choking me. It's like the cops were like staring at him. It's like, you was. I don't know. The cops should choke out more people. That's what I say. But that's just me. As long as it's not me, of course. But um <laughs> This is going to get me some zonking. Uh, but Cody Rhodes and Ricky Sparks again. Rick, uh, Cody really underestimates Ricky Starks. He tries to do a whole bunch of flashy stuff. Ricky, Ricky Starks was actually pretty good in NWA. Um, he never had really a long match. He never really had a good match. I just remember Ricky Starks losing the belt to Zicky Dice. That's definitely not the way for Ricky Starks to go out. But... It is what it is. Um, show, uh, Cody's being too showy. Arn Anderson starts to admonish Cody about that. Um, Sark's classic wrestling. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, Cody, again, way too many risks. Sark hit a superplex from the top rope. And they trade near falls. For the most part, Ricky Sparks was actually in control. Um, especially when Cody wanted to showboat a lot more. When Cody got serious, yeah, he would be so in control. But Ricky Sparks said, hey, I can hang with you, Cody. Until they trade near falls. Until he eats one crossroads. And that was it. It was a nice show of respect. Cody Rose maintains his belt. Another good cheeseburger match. And then we go find Britt Baker. And Britt, oh, was it now that we find Britt Baker? Yeah, now we find Britt Baker. Or sometime after that, she was found dumped in a dumpster with a banana peel on her face. That was funny. And and, and poor poor Rebel. I want to see. That was one moment. Um, Britt Baker says, you're fired. And Rebel goes, I'm free. And Britt Baker realizes what she said. No, you're not. Get me out of this. You're, you're, you're still retained. Oh. He's here like, I'm free! Oh, man. That was funny. Um, then she, like, she was like overly showing that she was texting people. And Britt Baker's still in the, in the garbage, in a dumpster. 
I still think it would have been funnier if she got dumped in the river. And to see her get dumped in the river and watch her just flounder around for a little bit. That would have been funnier. Actually, it would have, oh, you know what would have been really funny? Because I know if she was floundering in the river and she pulled up some, like, belt, some old wrestling belt that someone threw in the river. So once, actually, a friend of mine actually fished a wrestling belt out of the river once. That was weird. And then we have the Young Bucks taking on Jimmy Havoc and Kip Sabian, Team Superbad. And during, like, the initial check, the ref found a pair of crimping flyers on Johnny Havoc. It's like, oh, they actually still do the pat-down. They need to. That was funny, though. Uh, the Young Bucks, they double-team a lot on Kip Sabian. Uh, the Super Bad Squad kind of... They had their own double-team moves. Uh, Kip. And Havoc. Kind of had again their own. I love the fact they do that catapult eye poke thing, that's pretty cool. Uh, Butcher and Blade are there, <laughs> and then every so often, then like whenever like the ref would be distracted by something, Havoc came in, was like nailed one of the bucks with a wet floor sign. That was good. Then he started to take the rib tape off, Matt Jackson started to choke him with it. That's good. Then FTR shows up because the Butch and Blade were kind of being distractions. So FTR shows up. They show up. Their cup of coffee. Yep. We'll just walk in. Go right here ringside. No, it was that. Uh, Matt eventually did the the um, get speed up again by. Oh, he did the seated super bomb. That was pretty cool. Uh, Nick eventually comes in, gets the hat tag, takes out everyone. They have Kip Sabian and the sharpshooter, Matt Jackson. As Kip Sabian tries to cross towards the ropes, Matt Jackson hits the elbow. Um, Havoc distracts. He is, he is a plastic mallet. Whoa. Actually, that makes sense. In a, yeah, what do you need a plastic mallet with that wing sock? Yeah, and a toolkit. And then, then Penelope Ford laps one of the Jacksons in the head with that same wet floor sign. Why is there a wet floor? Well, I guess they have to have it by law. But that's just funny, though. Then there was a catapult kick. And the risky business by the Bucks of Youth. So Kip Sabian hit, hit a coup de grace, which coup de gras, which actually looks better than, than Finn Balor's coup de gras. I guess that's an English thing. Matt Jackson eventually kicked out of that. Hit a double Northern Light suplex. And it was a super kick party! Uh, there, was a, there was a self tombstone. We've seen that spot before. They set up... Um, I think Kip Sabian held up Jimmy Havoc when they kicked the knees out of Kip Sabian. So he, so he uh, tombstone his own partner. And then... There was the, I think, I think that was that match. And I'll tell you what, overall the match was pretty good. It was entertaining. I like the fact that Jimmy had brought so many weapons. I'll bump this up. This. Oh, and the fact that Kip Sabian wound up bleeding. I know he came to the ring with an earring. I think he left without the earring, though. That's not good. That's why you should really never wear jewelry in a wrestling ring. I think one day in a Lucha Libre, like, legitimate fight, some guy came and said, yeah, look at my new earring. The guy went, plucked it right out of his ear. Ouch. So, yeah, Kip Sabian was bleeding a little bit. I think he got, he got his earring ripped out of his ear. Hey, it's part of a hazard. Shouldn't be wearing it to begin with. I think when I played football and rugby, the first thing they told you is, like, listen, don't wear, don't wear chains. Because if some guy grabs it, one, it's going to rip. Two, it's going to cut your neck all open. And it's not bad, but you're, you're going to be missing a, a, an expensive gold chain. And your neck's going to look like it got torn torn up by, by a shirt. Got, got, got weed whacked. And two, never wear a ring. Because if you get hit in a certain spot, if you ever have, like, eat, like, even if it's like your girlfriend's ring, or if you're oh, more so in rugby, if you were married, said so never wear... The, if you were married or have that, I guess, engagement, male engagement ring, you never work because if you break your finger 
all the blood swelling kind of stops there and just puffs up and like eventually they do actually have to cut choppy choppy finger which is not good i like all my fingers and i know what it's like to have a broken finger because i broke this finger here and this finger here and this thing swolled up so much and i can still feel where the bones all screwed up um so overall i'll tell you what this match was a surf and turf match i'm trying to wrap this up in five minutes um butcher and blade jump in the ring ftr then they do dueling monster drivers they stare each other down there go out taz and brian cage to cut a promo so does brian so does john moxley uh, then we have the main event, which is fairly short. Um, you have the six gods of Chris Jericho, the Spanish god Sammy Guevara, taking on the bit a bit best friends. The bell ring, brawl starts. Oh, and Matt Hardy comes out for a color commentary. He was, he was okay, not as good as Chris Jericho, not bad. Um, Sammy again, he does when uh, the one best friend was in the corner, just a heel choke. Same, same, just chokes them. That's great. I do like the fact that they do those double teams when they think they can get away with it. Uh, Trent, he has those vicious chops to poor Sammy. Then very character. Actually, no, no. It wasn't a character in this match. Um, both Chris, Chris Jericho and Sammy Vara got beat up a lot. Uh, kind of even beatings, I guess. Uh, unlike WWE where the small guy always gets whooped on for whatever reason. However, Trent's got a baseball bat to the groin. Oh! Every man felt his pain. And it wasn't to the stomach, Tony Schiavone. A guy doesn't bend over and grab down there because he got hit in the stomach. Uh-uh. It's because he got hit in the balls. <laughs> and Sammy Caffari got dropped on his Latin god. See, I knew it was going to happen. All the, all the vulgarities I dropped broke my camera. Whoa. Um, so let me just finish this up a little bit. I was bad today. Uh, Chuck hit the Falcon's arrow, but no one but no one ever pins anyone with that. He went for Moonsault, but Chris Jericho rolled out of the way. Or uh, Sammy Guevara, I'm sorry. Sammy Guevara rolled out of the way, but he landed on his feet. The Liger Bomb. The best friends hit soul food. Trent was in the walls of Jericho. And eventually there was a Tower of Doom spot. And for some reason, that won the match. Which is weird. Um, the best friends win. Orange Cassidy was revealed to be the, the cameraman who was just tripping over stuff. He beats up Chris Jericho. This, this was an okay match. Cheeseburger match. That was an AEW Dynamite Wednesday. I don't know. Nothing really to complain about. It was actually pretty good. Fairly entertaining. Again, um, I do apologize for all my foul language, as you can tell by the title. There was so much. That even TNT, eventually TNT is going to be like, hey, this isn't New Japan Pro Wrestling. It's not pay-per-view. Shut your mouth, because we're not eating fines anymore. But, yep, that was it. So, I'm off tomorrow, somewhat, from this. Yay. Uh, I'll be back probably late Friday. Do my SmackDown review. And I'm off for the weekend. My week's almost over. Actually, no, it's not. But that's okay. So, I shall see everyone later. Take care, folks. Bye.